Okay, we're going. All right, we'll call, call to order the uh, Columbia City Park Board meeting, June 24th, 2024. Uh, let's take a roll call here. Karen Cody. Roger Farrell. Mark Ellis. Keith Nicholson is absent. Kim Mark is absent. Mm -hmm. And so here we go. Yeah, on to the, oh no, we have to review the meeting minutes. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. Yep. Mm -hmm. about that. So last meeting was April that we had. Uh, so if anybody, everybody get a chance to review that. I think we're good. Yeah. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> okay. Okay. So April's April minutes are approved. Yep. Okay. Do you want to make a motion? I move to approve April minutes. I second. Okay. All in favor. Hi. Hi. Okay. All right. New business. Well, of course, last week um, started us with the heat discussion. Um, we normally have a heat discussion when football's going on. Um, right. That's that's the problem. And the high school sets our policy, if you will, for that. So we just follow along with what the high school does. Um, we may change it a, a bit because of. Uh, you know, the little kids maybe get more of a break than what the high school kids do. Um, but that's that's where we're at on that. With that being said, we don't have anything per se for a really hot summer. We, uh, I should say Melinda, reached out. Um, she found that Wallen has a heat policy and that's that's in front of you. Um, then uh, we reached out to a few other parks and they have a real similar um, structure as this. Um, so I'll give you guys a minute to, to read it. It is, but you kind of have to be that way. No, no. And once somebody gets, you know, heat stroke or whatever, then they're never right after that. I mean, they really have a sensitive, uh, their body's really sensitive to the heat then. Um, we had a person that worked for us that was that way. So, really? so when it got really hot, um, it changed his daily routine mm -hmm. so that he wouldn't, uh, wouldn't experience those symptoms. Um, with this being said, with this, um, we also have a temperature that's mandated by the state of when the pool can open. So I'm kind of doing both things here, um, is, is that the temperature has to be above the air temperature has to be above 70 degrees before the pool can open. Even if the pool is heated, huh? Yes. Huh. Yes. Huh. Even if the pool is heated. Um, so with that being said, um, we're going to look into some of that here in a minute. But um, we are looking at uh, we have right now a DTN um, that the that the city uses. That's a weather service um, that tracks everything, has uh, heat index, you know, it's 93, feels like 96, that type of stuff. Um, so we're trying to make sure that that's the best thing that we have. And then we got to base all this stuff here in this and the pool temperature off of one device. Because you don't want somebody pulling up in the parking lot going, well, my is 72, right. Yeah. Right. And, and you've got, you know, 69 on, on your phone. You know, it, it, it's just, it fluctuates so much. So we're trying to find one source so we can say, okay, if it is 70 by this, 
then we will open. Or if it's, uh, you know. Couldn't you use a thermometer at the pool, like outside? We could. Um, because it might be 70 here, but warmer somewhere else. Or 68 here, warmer somewhere else, right? Right. Right, right. and that's why we're trying to find one. I mean, if the best thing is to hang a thermometer up there, then we can. Um, Put a webcam on it. <laughs> we 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 also we also pay for that weather service, oh. um, so we can we can use that. Um, they're looking into what dispatch uses. They use the same weather. They just have more options in that. Um, so we're looking at, but but we. So I just trying to make sure that we have one temperature that we go by. Mm -hmm. Either, either correct, correct. Well, my house said 100 degrees when I came in. Well, okay. Um, so that way, if it's 95 and it's you know not dropping, but it is to us, um, then you know we can go ahead and say we're we're playing tonight, sure. you know, and this is the well, this is what we're going to go by. So. Um, so it was Wallen. The very last page here says uh, Walden Complex in the fall softball. Uh, where is this? In Huntertown. Yeah. Okay. Just, just, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. just south of it. Right. Yeah. Yep. Um, For a local end. Yes. They've always had a, a good program over there. Uh, and, and the last, yeah, especially in the last few years, they've really they've really been able to gather everything up and get some people behind them and and going forward so um, where do they get their information well that I don't know um, I, don't know. I didn't see it in here and yeah sure. well that's one thing that we didn't ask um, just for the simple fact that each each city has their own kind of like weather station I don't know if you guys have ever heard of like BAM it's a it's a uh, a weather pay, and like Cincinnati Bengals, they they have bought into BAM, and so BAM is their weather they go by. Um, there's a lot of these pay weather places that people tend to to go with, um, just so they have one one place to go, um, and it's something too that we could put a link. On our website, so people yeah. so people can just click on it and go, oh, okay, well, we can do this before they leave the house. You know, it's right. it's seven it's sixty eight. Maybe it'll be seventy by the time we get well, there. Yeah, and you also have a text message. Rave. Too, right? mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. so and notification. and we are working on getting the sign going. Uh, the sign for a pool here. Yeah, for this one out here, the sign does go, um, but you can't see it. In the sun, the pixels are too light. It's so old that it washes itself out. Um, so what we've done is, is uh, instead of just getting a new sign that's tens of thousands of dollars, well, no, we can't even program it because the company that had all the software for that has since uh, left. Um, that sign's probably close to 10 years old. Um, and you know how fast technology changes. So the only place we can reach is in Florida that is supposedly supposed to be able to program that sign. Um, but we're trying to make it so that it's uh, on our fiber network so that the pool can use it, uh, we can use it. It just is easier for everybody to, to get to as well. Um, so what we did was we bought some outside TVs. Um, That's the thing. Yeah, we have them at the pool. We have three of them at the pool. Oh, nice. They're outside TVs. Um, they're weatherproof, and they are um, cold-proof, if you will, to a certain temperature. Yeah, you'll take them out probably for winter. Well, yeah, or just or just turn them off. Oh. You know, turn them off or something. Because um, we don't know how that goes. We don't have them on all all winter long at the pool, um, but all all summer long they're on. Um, they don't get the images ingrained. But then that will that way we can have the temperature on that, 
but it is from the weather app yeah. from the, the city. Yeah. Is it DTN? Yes, it's the DTN by, uh, uh, let's see, it's WX Century. It's the DTN Weather Century. Um, so. What do the, what do the um, TVs display at the pool? Um, they just run promotional. They'll, they'll run the menus. Okay. They'll, they'll run some sponsors. Um, may run upcoming events okay. um, at the pool. You know, we got the film and float on July 27th. So we close down the pool at 7. And then, uh, then the pool opens back up, which it's free. And you come in at 8. And then the movie starts about 9.30, 9, 9.30, somewhere around in there, depending on how dark it is. And then you can sit out in the water and watch. This year is Moana. So, but, uh, so that's kind of where we're going to with, with, the, with this heat. Uh, index. Um, I don't know if you guys want to do anything with it tonight. Look at it a little bit more. Um, wait until maybe the other two are here. So. I think that would be a good idea. Okay. Um, and, and that'll give you more time to do some more research too. Yeah, because I can reach out to New Haven. Um, Nick over there has been really helpful. We've both been using each other. Oh, CCAC? Yeah, CCAC. Yeah. I wonder if they have anything like this. They probably do. Um, it's a large complex. Yeah. I and it might be somewhere to reach out to as well. I don't know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I just don't know how they're working because they are by the city and by the county. They're ran by the city and the county. Right. So I don't know what gets lost in translation. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But I can reach out to them. I can reach out to Plymouth. Um, I kind of like to reach out to people that have the same size mm -hmm. that, that we are. Sure. Um, so apples to apples. So, but I can reach out more of that. Um, but this is what we're looking for is something that we can say, okay, this is the policy. This is what we're going to go by so parents will know, uh, coaches will know, and it may um, eliminate some questions, a bunch of questions. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it, again, it just came up because we've never really had it in the summer. I mean, you would think maybe we would, but we really haven't. Yeah, I mean, it was hot last week, but yeah, it's not unusual for summer heat here. That's no, you're looking at the season, though. Right, that's right. So your body's yeah. not really acclimated for it. Yeah, and it was definitely humid. Um, Let's see. I gotta keep lifting my glasses. I don't have my contacts, so. Um, okay, then the next new business is kind of similar. Again, it's with the pool, and it's about policies. Um, since the departure of Kyle, um, we've been le le learning a few things um, that we need to straighten out. Um, one of them being that we have a, um, a group rate. So if you have whatever constitutes a group, you get this rate for all, like say, let's just say it's 10, and you get a discount. And so we're having people abuse that now to where they may, they may come in a bigger group and then split and come in because the, the threshold is 10 equals a group. Um, so, I mean, it's just li little things like that, but people are exploiting it. And, and it's, very, it's very hard for us to divide it uh, when, we're, when we're up there and look at it. Um, so, you know, there's that kind of policy that, that we had that in place. So I think it's, it's going to have to take a policy for people to understand that we can't do that anymore. If we just change it, then... Because nobody likes change. Well, sure. It's a surprise. 
Right, right, right. It's like, oh, we can't, you can't do this. We did it last year. Um, that's one of the mild ones. The um, one of the bigger topics is um, private parties. We've had people that want to rent out the whole complex for the day. It just isn't feasible. I mean, on a slow day, we can make three thousand dollars over there. Um, so we really can't do that. Um, plus, depending on the group, it's more of a herding cats than it is a fun time for everybody involved. Um, and it's really hard on the lifeguards because um, you got to remember, I mean, most of them lifeguards over there this year are very young. They're from 15 and to 17 but the majority of them are in that 15 and 16 years you know years old um so there was a suggestion that maybe and and we do do private parties after hours so it doesn't interrupt public swim that's the other thing with a, a party all day is now you're taking that away from sure. the public mm -hmm. um there was something mentioned about maybe uh, picking and say, let's just say Mondays and Wednesdays, you are able to have private parties from four to seven or after hours, which would be um, like seven to nine, like a two hour block. Mm -hmm. um, nothing crazy like four hours, you know, things like that. Um, I'll get together some of the other things that we're kind of looking at. We're trying to streamline it and get it more, uh, I guess, simplified so that when the next person comes in, they're, they're not, I mean, they would be really overwhelmed. There's three of us that are tackling this right now. And um, we all have our own little spot. You know, I do swim team. I make sure that they have their stuff. Um, so that's going to be also put onto them, and, and we're streamlining that. Megan DeVito has been great this year as a coach, helping streamline. She knows um, she knows what she's doing, so that's been a great fit. Um, but I want to just kind of throw those two things out at you guys. Um, and again, it's it's something that if I find this stuff, I can send it out to you over email, and we can kind of get something started if not finalized. Um, so something you, like that. You want to get rid of group, the group rates, or yes. Okay. And then another thing that we're going to have to look at, and I don't know how much you guys will be involved with this. Um, we've been at five dollars for ever since we started. That's six seasons. Um, I know that jury raised their prices. I don't know if it's something that we keep like kids, and I, we, we say that you have to be at least 14 years of age or older to be able to be at the pool without an adult. So if we would say like 14 and under is still the $5, but then adults are this much. Um, kind of try to split it up a little bit instead of across the board, everybody's $5. Yeah. Um, and then it's not such a big uh, shock to the system right. when they see the prices go up next year. You know, it's not across the board. Yeah. Um, and Are you wanting to raise the prices because of cost chemicals? Yes, absolutely. Stuff. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure all that stuff's gone up. Yeah, immensely. Six years is a long time. Chlorine, chlorine has, especially after COVID, we saw everything easily double. Um, chemicals actually tripled in price. Um, just to give you a little background, um, we go through two buckets of chlorine a day. Bucket, bucket. Y yes, yeah. Um, each bucket is roughly, let's just say, three hundred fifty dollars is really what it is. So, and we usually order a pallet, and on that pallet comes 24, yeah, 
on that pallet comes 24. So if you do the math, it becomes thousands real quick. We usually get two pallets at the beginning of the year and we get two pallets towards the end of the year. So we go through like 67 pails at $350. And that's just a chlorine. Yeah. Now you add the acid in there. Yeah. Um, and then you obviously take into account the running of the facility itself, the utilities. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think it's um, something that I was going to look into next year. If you guys want to be a part of that, that's fine. Um, if you don't, I, it's fine too. I just don't know where that's at, you know, being new myself still. Yeah. I don't know how much should go to you guys and what shouldn't, so. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Unfortunately, we have to do that. Even if we are making a little bit of a profit, you need to have money that you accumulated as profit for upgrades and fixing things that you know, like pumps and diving boards and yeah, new and chairs, we right? we had the main pool motor go out last right. year. We had a feature motor go out this year. Um, we ordered all new logs. I know, um, I know we're not in it to make it. No, 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 no. We, the we are, yeah. In nice condition and running well. Yeah, and we are service. I, un I understand that. Um, and we have new pads that are going to go on where the logs were put, but they couldn't do it with water in the pool, so they'll have to come back up this fall and put that in. Mm -hmm. um, they also put some stuff around because the netting underneath the zero entry was getting rotten and kind of was tearing and things. <laughs> so it's definitely, you know, the slides are from California company out in California um, they're getting faded they're getting you know there's some water leaks here and there so you fly a guy from California out here to help diagnose a, uh, a problem you know that's expensive is there um, a company or do you have uh, somebody that has to inspect those that, that slide and diving boards and stuff every year to make sure they work lifespan of a diving board is five years okay. um, now it's a little bit crazy because we have six seasons but it still f falls within the five years sure. so we're going to have to look at a diving board next year diving board uh, when we looked at it and this is way back when we got a new one from Bert for Burnworth and it's the same kind of diving board um, it was four thousand dollars for the diving board so you can imagine what the price is right. probably of that yeah. yeah so um, we'll have that to replace next year We'll have to look at the ropes that go over the log. Um, luckily, we had some money left over last year um, with some different things, and that's allowed the purchase of the logs and the purchase of the pads and the purchase of... So we were able to kind of catch up with the stuff that we need to maintain. I, I foresee another motor going out and just going down to be rebuilt. That way we don't have such a big cost if it goes out. Yeah. Um, could, could another motor be purchased as a backup? <coughs> Excuse me, as a backup. That way, we do have uh, uh, the, the ability to keep running the facility. Just be quickly replaced and then have the other ones out to be rebuilt. Can that be done? Yeah, we can, we can. Um, the both pool motors though that we've had sent off um, were no good to rebuild. Um, um, so we had to get brand new ones for that. Um, and the way things are going, what we got explained to us through, uh, it's Cook Electric in Indianapolis. Um, they said that, you know, if you break a shaft in them, which we did on the main pool motor, um, to rebuild it costs just as much as a new one. Sure. Especially now, because you can get a new one in two weeks, the rebuild kit might take six. <laughs> it's just the way it's, it is now. Um, so if, if they, we have done that for the pool heater, mm -hmm. we have a backup motor. We have a couple backup pumps for uh, the acid. Um, so so we're, we're getting there. Sure. Um, it's just if we can have it rebuilt and then get a, get a new one, mm -hmm. it's, it's better. Yeah. It's better off that way. But that's where we'd like to go. You know, it's where we're trying to get to. Sure. Yes, sir. Where's, where's one of those pumps? Right. 
cost right? The brand new motor that we set in last year, this main pump motor, was $16,000. The one we got this year was $4,000, but it's the littlest one of all of them. So I would imagine that easily we're looking at 10000 for the two, well, for the one, and then the two that are the slide ones are almost as big as the main. So, you know, you're looking at probably twelve, thirteen thousand for those two. Just a little water. Yeah. 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 And and it's you know, unless you unless you're in it, you don't know about it. So yeah. So that's that's kind of where we're going with the pool is I'll get some things more so um, set up in the policy wise I think you guys should be in on you know because we're state mandated for the temperature I think you guys should be mandated for or uh, for the parties you know and and kind of give us some direction in in that way um, uh, I have a question on the um, group group pricing or rates Mm -hmm. If it's a group, uh, say a, a, a daycare program comes in and they have credentials that say, hey, we are a daycare, and they call and say, hey, tomorrow we're going to bring this group, is that going to be something that they won't be able to get the group rate, or is that different? No. It falls into a different category? Yeah, that falls in because, um, because if we do it in that way, we can actually... Um, either give them like a, a price we have a nonprofit rate as well oh. so if it, so that's based on nonprofit so sure. like the Y from sure. Noble County comes right. down um, so, so schools you know we're not trying to get rid of mm -hmm. of that be, you know because that's part of our community in a lot of ways mm -hmm. um, what we're trying to get rid of is is um, we have a lot we had ace three years ago that wanted to rent the pool out for um, you know like appreciation for everybody that goes to ace and we were like you know like ace appreciation days um so then we got them to do like um the first 200 because we have a 400 capacity so if you have 200 then you're already taking the public yeah. number down right. you know so it's a very delicate balance to do that. This year we're doing um, ProFed. ProFed wanted to do something like they did at Jury Pool. Um, is just like buy a bunch of tickets and be able to, you know, have them come in during that period. What we ended up working out, which I think will work fine, is uh, they actually bought 200 tickets and they're going to pass them out. And then that way, if people come in and they're at capacity then those people can go and then they can still use it right so if you if you block off that time then you know you have 200 but 300 public came in before the other hundred from you know then then those people are out we can't bring them in so that's something that we we did this year um, to be able to do that um, we're seeing a lot more. Um, we're we're seeing a lot more group type things, but not. Not in the schools and and the YMCA and things like that. They're they're always coming in. Um, we've just seen an uptick in in uh, certain things, certain uh, businesses, and uh, so. We're just trying to fill that out as best we can but I think the ProFed fix would do would be something that we could carry out if someone wanted to do that like ACE or you know we've got um, people link that wants to do the same thing well okay they they could what they're gonna end up doing um, or what I'll suggest to them to do is say the first hundred are paid so we keep track of the first hundred coming in and they've already paid us for those hundred mm -hmm. and then we're we're good mm -hmm. um, 
because if you try to do anything else than that, then you get into the occupancy and the bather load and, you know, it's just a lot of stuff that goes back and forth. Um, for the for the state also, um, we're, required, we're required to have a certain bather load as well. So that's how we come up with the 400. So a lot of moving parts there. Yes, definitely. A lot of moving parts. <clears throat> Um, so I'll, I'll have that stuff all lined out then next time and uh, have a better grip on the, the heat policy as well. Um, since we already have one from the high school that we use, it's not something that we have to do right away because, you know, baseball, softball ends this week. So um, anything else you guys want to talk about on those two things? Uh, oh, on those two things, no. Okay. I was just curious as to since Little Settlers is over, uh -huh. how, how did it go where they were at the uh, horse? Oh, I, I don't know. Um, I saw a lot of trucks and campers uptown, mm -hmm. so I don't know if they only had a handful, like their um, shower unit, yeah. um, and maybe some of the lower the the lower people uh, on the rung um the helpers and that may have been out there but i did see a lot of um campers in that uptown so they may have been able to jostle them but jostle them around but i i have not heard how that worked so and i don't even know how the parade gathering because um you know that north drive yeah. Yeah. and everything it was just yeah. it's all tore up so it made it work, apparently. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I didn't hear anything about it, but... Yeah, I talked to several people and they thought it was all right. Yeah. Yeah. Getting, getting lined up down here and getting all that mess. And going. Yeah, I mean, hopefully it'll be finished by next year and they can... Mm -hmm. They won't have an issue with that. Um, so... <laughs> no, I was going to go through the old business well, no, real quick. There you go. Um, we will have the Steve Simmons as far as I'm aware of today. I got to give him another call, but, um, July 6th, he was going to have it there on the track, um, and set it up so people can sit in the stands and have his little concert out there. I don't know how many churches he's reached out to, but that's what he's trying to do. Um. Yeah, so the pool has been crazy with uh, things going on. Melinda and Andrea's have, have been at the pool several weekends or at least one day, uh, one day out of the weekend. Um, the, um, the scheduling of swim team and things, um, Megan's done a really good job. However, um, you know, I still have to figure out how to get the, the meats paid for and all that kind of stuff and moving it around and, and understanding um, like they pay per swimmer they don't just pay per group so it's like it's not like a baseball team where you have the baseball team coming in and it's three hundred dollars for them right. to come in they actually pay per um, swimmer so if they have 18 they only pay for the 18 if they have to you know 38 then they're paying for 38 so it's not just something that I that they're going to this one and uh, yeah I send out this money I have to wait on her mm -hmm. to get the numbers which she gets them as soon as she can and then I have to go uptown and have them cut me a check and it's just not like a, a club where they could just pay and and keep going so it's been a little bit different um, Tyler Kissinger has been doing a great job of uh, scheduling everybody um, and as far as that goes everybody down there has really stepped up um, the admin are doing a little extra um, the lifeguards are doing an excellent job this year of keeping the bathrooms in order um, they had a little hard time with that last year um, we did put another thing in place as that on Fridays the maintenance guys come over and clean it all up for before the weekend and then the guards maintain it until the next Friday so 
that's something that we implement implemented as as well. Um, so I also said this week was the last week for baseball softball. Um, they're in term tournament mode right now. Um, I've had some parents approach me about the baseball and softball, mm -hmm. about um, possibly doing clinics for pitchers and catchers before the season. Okay, as for softball or baseball? Um, actually, for both. For both, okay. Because, and I experienced it this year too for the first, because my grandson moved from coach pitch to kid mm -hmm. pitch. What a difference in the games. <laughs> Absolutely. He went from hitting all of the the whole game to I think he had a handful of hits the whole season. I mean, it just it's just so obvious that if a team has one has a good pitcher mm -hmm. and a good catcher, yep. they win the, the whole thing. Yep. And everybody else. And it's the same thing with softball too. Yeah. With, um, and it's very it's very noticeable in softball because they don't have to worry about pitch counts. Baseball, we can control that. We have pitch counts mm -hmm. that we use uh, to try to eliminate a lot of that. Um, and I, I mean, I'll be real honest. We've put on clinics. Mm -hmm. um, we used to do that with uh, the high school coaches. And of course, you know how long ago it's been. It's right. been four or five years ago because we would use the high school gym um, and put on clinics because of the time of year that we do. And we never got to turn out. Oh. Um, hmm. So it, you know, and we'd usually do it on a on a Saturday or Sunday. Yeah. Um, and uh, it just it just never really worked out uh, clinic wise. Now, as far as uh, you know, putting something together just for pitchers and catchers, um, we might be able to go down that road. But again, I don't know about the participation. Um, because you're in you're in that basketball season yep. when, when we have teams made and and all that um, so it's just it, you got kids that are playing basketball that will play baseball too um, we have been trying to figure out how to um, get more um, I don't want to say competitiveness, but uh, more of a teaching aspect with the ball games than used to be. Um, you know, everybody was like, oh, I've got to win the lob ball, you know, tournament this year. And um, so they, they, were, they were not teaching. They, you didn't see their teams grow. Um, and then they'd also stack their team. That happens a lot. It's, it's the difference in coaches. Like it's, you know, I um, just seeing it, seeing how some coaches are very, you know, into teaching and supporting and all of that, mm -hmm. and then other coaches are not. And I know they're, you know, these guys are. They're volunteers. Paid, they're volunteers, yeah. and they're giving their time and all that mm -hmm. stuff. But. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a rough thing to, it's, try it's, to regulate. Yes, and, it is. It's very hard. Um, and then, you know, everybody has their own feelings as to um, how a team should be, um, how that position should be played. Um, we've had some coaches that are very much a stickler on, you know, the way kids wear their uniforms, you know. Um, and that's great when you get into higher age or, right. you know, in high school. That's that's part of sportsmanship. But when you have e ballers and lob ballers running around, if you can get them to focus on what you're doing for five minutes, you're you're doing good. You're doing the game. Yeah. Yeah. You walk up on them over. Right. So and unfortunately, um, the way it goes too, um, no matter what league you're in, what age group you're in. Um, the coaches that sometimes are the ones that teach, their teams no, normally have the, they, the best records mm -hmm. because the coach isn't worried about winning. He's worried about teaching the kids, you know. And that would be great to do, but there's... Oh, the parents, yeah, that's another thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
some of the, I, I know one coach already who said, this is his first year, and he said he, he doesn't think he'll do it again. Mm -hmm. this is, these are nine-year-old kids <laughs> and the parents. Yeah. Yeah. We used to have to hang signs. I think they've all yeah. gotten tore down now. But we used to have signs up that yeah. said, you know, it's, these are volunteers and these are kids don't, you know, they're not going to play the ML MLB right now, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so, but that's what happened to our umpires as well. We used to do an umpire chief and then we used to have all our own umpires for every field. Um, and now we don't do that because these young kids were umpiring and they would get followed out to their car yeah. because of because the parent didn't like the call and so they would follow them out and so you know here you got teenagers that are like oh, I, I don't need this right. and you know and it's coming it's already came I think to that point with all sports and the umpires and referees that they get yelled at all the time and you know you hear about people being followed out and that's kind of where that gap is now to where most of all the referees and umpires and things like that are older and probably going to age out soon mm -hmm. and there's not a whole lot of young guys that are coming up through it um, so thankfully we have on turf that we get our minor league and major league umpires so they are licensed um, they usually run a little older um, so they're kind of like our contract mm -hmm. person that does that and then Melinda actually takes care of the law ball um, umpires so well I think I think that carries through now even into the upper part of athletics mm -hmm. uh, if, if you watch uh, and I don't watch much of it but NBA basketball mm -hmm. this year it was a shame the way the, the the referees they were trying their best every player would yell at the referee call a foul on he's in the referee's face and I don't know how they do it it, it just I'd never noticed it that much until this year mm -hmm. one young one young player every time he made a mistake it was referee's fault and he just go he's talking to him all the time mm -hmm. and that trickle down effect and yeah yeah um it's, it's definitely something that's hard to figure out um the other thing that we do with that too is we lean on the high school coaches right. so if the high school coaches knowing that this is a feeder system you know right. there'll be a handful that'll come out of the rec league and go up you know and play in high school um, we try to have them carry on those clinics. Yeah, I know they do a clinic. Um, it, it's not yeah. actually a park clinic. Right. Because for some reason you label it as that and not a lot of people show up. Right. But you put a you know, high school coach behind it and there's people that show up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I know that uh, JD... The high school oh, baseball. The new, the new baseball coach. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's very enthusiastic about that, yeah. um, so he's very involved, mm -hmm. um, which is nice. Um, as well as you know, Coach Fox is very involved with the right. JFL. Yeah. Uh, it's it's always nice to see that because because oh, yeah. then those kids are gonna see them later if they go on. Mm -hmm. So um, the only other thing. I they have is the Eagle Park project. Um, they poured concrete edging curbing around the pickleball court and they've got that surface I think pretty well um, flat and good uh, so they can pave it. Once they pave it then it'll be I believe 30 days before they can put any kind of color or sealant or anything like that on it. Um, it's kind of like concrete in the way that you can't drive a heavy truck across concrete, you know, maybe five, six days after it's poured. Um, so that'll be a settling um, point that the paving has to settle and, and, and really it's kind of a waiting thing because um, the oils 
are so fresh that it won't let the um, paint and that adhere to it really well. So that's why they kind of wait for it. Yeah, let it let it burn out. Yeah, or you know, rain wash it away if we if we ever get that anymore. Um, they uh, the electric department did all the conduit over here um, as well, which was huge. Um, and of course, they were under time. Uh, restraint because they needed to get all that in before the sidewalks started going in. Um, so they were very much on the ball and uh, um, I've told Sean Lickie thank you I don't know how many times um, about being able to do that. I mean he was able to to, to get um, the conduit we needed quick within a short amount of time and and get that in. So. The next part of it is to wait for the paving and then the fencing goes up. Um, and then there's just some other little things around there before it can start being played on. Um, then, uh, then as they move up, I think the next thing that they're going to be focused on is the swing uh, because Hunger uh, Skate Park, they don't um, they don't come in until like December or later mm -hmm. to start wow. that part of it. So they're the last ones to be in. So that part will be, for phase one. yeah, that, that'll be the last part that's done for phase one. Um, Hunger put a skate park in up at Kendallville. I guess it's a huge hit. So yeah, heard they, it. yeah, they love it. And, you know, people that go up there to it just love it. So hopefully that transcends the down here mm -hmm. and it, it'll sure be good so basically that phase one mm -hmm. should be completed sometime spring I would I would think I, I would think yeah yeah late spring early summer mm -hmm. uh, and of course you know that's all depending on weather and all that good junk but um, but they they have really moved really fast on it and it seems like they're kind of stalled right now and i think it's maybe because they're waiting for concrete to cure or waiting for the the swing to come in and arrive and waiting on some rain. yeah they're you know it, uh, all the above they're they're just trying to wait for all that um but uh i think that's about about all is there anything that you guys have seen or want to ask or anything of that nature? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. have you heard uh, of any progress on the, the, uh, I guess the Greenway Trail extension or the segment that's going to be put in on Spencer Street and then down Chauncey? Are you involved with any of that? Or? I've heard that it's going to be starting the, the holdup right now is they had to the state i believe had to do something with the nine uh main street sure. bridge um and then i th i'm under the understanding that it'll start here soon um because they've had some easement things come up and they've had this come up with um uh, the state of being crossing there mm -hmm. um so, and I think it's moving forward because they came and cut a tree down. Yep. Um, so, I think it's getting close. Um, I mean, I'm, they, they told me that it was supposed to be started in the spring, and then they had all these, is, you know, issues that pop up, and that's just what happens. Um, yeah. So, I, I mean, I would say it has to be, I would think, rolling by fall yeah. for sure. Um, there was something else that it jogged my mind when you, oh, we're having a lot more this year and maybe it was before, but we just never seen it. Um, we've seen a lot more of, uh, factories reaching out and wanting to do like a day of caring type thing. Um, Lear did that. Um, Realcraft did that here recently. Um, they're coming in just for two to four hours and you know helping us out I 
believe Real Craft did it on a Wednesday. I'm not real sure. I can't remember. Um, Lear did it on a Saturday. You know, so you know, community's trying to help out. I like it. So we just, it's really hard to get cro uh, projects for a big group mm -hmm. that they're able to finish in that two to four hour, you know, mark. So it's not that we don't like it. It's just a little bit harder to do that. Um, community involvement. Yeah, we've seen an uptick with that. Um, we should be by, I would think, the end of summer, uh, seeing the mobile library up at Dreamland that the young lady wanted to put in for Girl Scouts. It's so it's kind of like her, it's kind of like an Eagle Scout project. Um, she's building a uh, uh, you know one of those little boxes that you can put books in and then you can take them and then you bring them back and. Mm -hmm. Or if you feel like there's a book somebody you know could get a use out of that you don't use anymore, put that in there. Um, just kind of get the kids reading again. She really, she really felt like she wanted to do that. And I said, well, the best place probably would be Dreamland because there's a whole big bunch of kids that go up there. Mm -hmm. um, so that'll be that'll be coming soon. I told her that maybe we can make quite a bit of a fuss over it when she gets it ready to open up. Kind of let everybody know. Um, and then we got the 4th of July coming up. Hurrah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just a big day. Yeah. It's a long day. Um, most of the staff comes in 3 to 11. So, um, and then I'm, I'm usually here pretty much all day running around getting vendors in and things like that. So, um, and if it's super hot, it's a long day. Um, but we're looking forward to that. We've already had quite a few uh, more vendors. Last year we had more vendors than we had the previous year. Um, we were able to set up those temporaries. And I have to get a hold of Sean again uh, with the electric department and ask him when would be the best time for him to hook those up. Because, um, you know, next Wednesday is going to be the... Fourth of July. So, so with the Fourth of July activities down at the park, you know, mm -hmm. more vendors means less parking. Correct. Um, I know we don't have a bridge that goes across. Correct. Yet, however, we do have lots of grass out there. People could park there, and can they watch fireworks from there? Would it just, or is it just not going to work because of trees? Um, you wouldn't be able to see the ground show. I don't think. Sure. Um. You'll be able to see everything else. Um, again, you got one road going back right. and one road coming, you know, uh -huh. out again. <clears throat> um, I mean, I'm sure there's people that do set over there. Um, there's nothing that says you can't. Uh, it's just that you are going to have to be willing not to see yeah. part of the show. And they could. there and walk because there is a concrete bridge there right by the, by the quad yeah and, and a lot of people have figured that out they we don't we don't set up the phones like we used to mm -hmm. in Columbia Shores the police have now taken that back over mm -hmm. but we used to make it to where you could only park on one side of the road mm -hmm. and um, that made people getting in and out real easy mm -hmm. then they park at Kroger's um, they even park at Kroger's and walk across at the Demoni Grimes Trail oh. down there. Oh, okay. um, they cannot go past the bridge, though, because of the fireworks being lit. So, oh, so they could maybe sit back by the pond? No. Oh, they can't cross the bridge? No, they can't cross oh. the bridge. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, um, for safety reasons. Sure. Oh, yeah. Um, so and you know and there's people that park at the Y and come across, but but that is a, that is something that we're going to get together here this week and see how many vendors we do have, and you know how we're going to do it is do we have to shut? Well, we're going to have to shut down more of the parking lot, and we try to keep that as handicapped anyways. Um, there will come a point where it won't really matter, unfortunately. Whether you're handicapped or not, you, you're going to have to you're going to have to park. You know, here everybody's going to start parking here, and go forward. Yeah. 
Um, That's why I say we have a lot of green space right over here. You could park and get people into the park property across that bridge however mm -hmm. getting to that bridge would be a little bit difficult right because go through someone's yard, correct there's that swampy wet area that you can get really yeah get really and i i know uh mr and mrs cohut they wouldn't like that no. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so if they did park here they'd have to come all the way back up and yeah. and go around um yeah, it's too bad we didn't have like a parking lot somewhere where you could have one of those little shuttles, you know, mm -hmm. where people get on. But mm -hmm. there's, it's not really well, anything. Well, that's my next suggestion. Is there's Fort I mean, Wayne I know has those little shuttle bus yeah. right. things. Is there other companies that would rent those and provide that as a service? I do know that. To shuttle people in and out. I know that we could. Just to help relieve the parking issues. I, we do. I think even with the shuttles, you're gonna. I can't imagine coming back out. Coming back out, yeah, right? That. I can't imagine trying to get a shuttle out of there. Mm -hmm. That yeah. would be insane. Yeah, because not everybody's gonna park and ride. Oh, right. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you'll still have people coming in. So you'll have that. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. I don't. So until the bridge is built. Yeah, in, in, yeah, until there's a connecting piece, yeah. um, I think it's just going to be business as usual, and we'll have to um, keep a parking lot or keep some of the parking lot for handicap down there. Um, but it will eventually become an issue because uh, the the it, it has really grown. Um, we saw, it, I think. Last year was the first year that it really, really like took off. Because mm -hmm. um, I think everybody had food trucks, you know, from COVID and all that. Mm -hmm. You know, now they, they have them, so they, they want to use them. Sure. Um, but yeah, it's exciting. We, we've got quite a few more that have asked um, to come down. And I think the Questy Fire Department is or union fire department is coming it down again usually they're the ones with the big flag that mm -hmm. run the fire truck up so i think they're coming down again they didn't come down last year so but um other than that i don't have anything anything else on the agenda so so Last thing on here, in conclusion, it says, yep. uh, next meeting is July 22nd. So I'll make sure that's on our calendar, and I'm sure we'll get a reminder, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I like, to, I like to do that like the week before. Yep. And that's good. That's so. real good. <laughs> <laughs> um, the motion to adjourn if there's any other business to discuss. Second. Yeah. I'll move. <laughs> okay, Ro Roger skipping. He's just like, I'll I just go. You, I thought you were going along that line. <laughs> <laughs>